Hey there, Stampers. Welcome to another Friday Live. Happy Friday. My name is Sherry Roth. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Sherwood Park, Alberta, Canada. And I am going to craft a fun fold project with you today. So I received a swap from Cindy Willis and it was this cute little fun fold. And I had never seen this fold before. So I thought, I've seen it, seen it um, I believe I've seen it on a larger scale, just not kind of done this way. So I wanted to recreate this and kind of make it my own. So that's what we're gonna do today. Um, and it's actually quite simple to make, which is always nice. Okay, so I, recreated it when I was playing around with it. This is what I recreated it with, but we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna use some different pattern paper today. So we are going to, or this one uses the Peaceful Poppies DSP, and then it opens like that. So, and I did something I don't normally do. I, well, first of all, I use the color purple, which I rarely use the color purple. Um, and I mixed two pattern papers, but I think it really works well because um, you've got the smaller print here and then the larger print here. So I really like how it looks. So we're gonna go ahead and recreate that, except I thought it would be really nice to do, I'm just trying to find a place to put this here, to use this patterned paper from the Peaceful Poppies. So. Um, in order to create this fold, what you're going to need is you're going to need a four inch by 11 inch piece of either cardstock. So Cindy used cardstock in her sample, but I'm using DSP. And then we need to score it. So I'm gonna pull in my Stampin' Trimmer and I'm gonna need to open this up because we need to do a few score lines. Okay, so we are going to score it along the 11 inch side. We're going to score it at two inches. And when you score DSP, you don't wanna push as hard as you score when you score cardstock because it's not quite as heavy. And then three and three quarters. Thanks for sharing, Beth. And then seven and a quarter. and then nine inches. Okay, so now we can get this out of the way. And we're gonna fold along these score lines. And I need to grab my bone folder. Okay, so I'm going to fold in. So there's a score line here, here, here and here. So the second one in from both of the outer edges, I'm going to fold in like that. Good morning, Sherry. Good morning, Susan. Good morning, Marilyn. And then I'm gonna fold this one in. We're doing a fun fold card this morning. So here is the sample that I made. We're gonna create it it's something a little bit different. So it just opens up like this. So for those of you who are just joining us, this piece of DSP measures four inches by 11 inches. And then it's scored at two, three and three quarters, seven and a quarter and nine inches. Okay, so those two inner score lines were both folded in. And now these outer score lines I'm folding out. Okay, so this is what it will look like. Good morning, Christine. Okay, and then, actually maybe what we'll do is we'll decorate this first. Okay, so for the inside, now for my sample, I chose to keep it blank so that I could use it for whatever I wanted to use it. I'll probably turn it into a birthday card, but I wanted to leave it blank because I thought it could be used for lots of different occasions. So in order for a spot to write, I mean, it's a shame to cover over this DSP. You could, what you could do is you could put like a, a label shape with your greeting stamped on there 
So that would be in the center panel. And then you could always add a white layer on the back and then write your message on the back. But I am going to add a piece of white on the inside here. And this white measures three and three eighths by three and seven eighths. And it just fits in between those two inner score lines. Okay. So I'll just add a little bit of adhesive. And this is such a pretty paper. I think this is one of my favorites. Well, I don't know. I think I say that for almost every pattern in this paper pack. <laughs> There's so many patterns that I love. Okay, so this is gonna fold in like this. And then we need to do our little accent. So we're going to use the Painted Labels dies. So this, these dies come as a bundle with the Painted Poppy stamp set. So when you purchase it as a bundle, you save 10%. So I am going to use this swirly image because I love it. And I'm gonna cut it from black cardstock. Maybe what we'll do is we'll do all of our stamping first because then we can do all the die cutting at once. Okay, and then I've got a scrap piece of Whisper White cardstock and I am going to use this image. So if you guys are part of my VIP page, good morning, Shara. If you guys are part of my VIP page, you saw me make a card, actually this card, um, on Tuesday evening. And if you're not part of the VIP page, make sure you request to join. Um, every Tuesday over on that, pa that group, I um, do uh, an exclusive Facebook Live. So I used this image and I showed you how to watercolor it or not watercolor it, uh, color it in with the Stampin' Blends. But today, I'm gonna show you how you use this big, I call it a blob. Good morning, Carol. Um, so we're gonna use that, and we're gonna use this flower and our leaf image. Okay, so I am going to stamp my flower first, and I'm going to do it in Blackberry Bliss. Hey, Mom. And I'm gonna do it full force, so I'm not gonna stamp off. I want it to be nice and crisp. I love this color. I'm not a huge purple person, but this, I don't know, it's just so rich. I love it. Okay, so we've got our flower. And then I've got Rich Razzleberry, which is a little bit lighter. I'm gonna pull in a scrap, and I'm gonna use the blob it's a it's like a background image I shouldn't call it a blob because that doesn't sound very good and I'm going to ink it up but before I stamp it over my flower I'm going to stamp off on some scrap paper so that it will be nice and light now this is not meant to line up perfectly so I'm just going to stamp it and I'm not worried that it's not perfectly in there because it's, like I said it's not meant to um Sue asked how do we request to join the VIP page to see your tutorials on Tuesday. Um, if you go to my Stamped Treasures page, Sue, there is a tab that says Groups, and then it will be listed there. And then just request to join, and then I will approve you. Okay. And then I'm gonna clean this, because I'm gonna use it for something else. Where's my cleaner? You should see my studio right now. I tell you, it's, it's a mess, but I, as long as January has felt, man, it feels like January is just dragging and dragging. But having this extra week, um, I have gotten so much done, it's wonderful. And now, where's my old olive ink? So I've got piles and piles of upcoming classes, all my classes for February, some of them are for, from March are planned. It's been wonderful. Okay, so. I'm going to use old olive, again use the blob, but stamp off and then stamp onto my white cardstock. And then I'm gonna leave the old olive out because I'm gonna take my leaf. Hey, Lane. And I'm going to stamp two little leaves on this blob. So then I've got the same kind of coloring on both my leaves as I do on my flower. Okay, and then 
I'm gonna pull out the coordinating dies. So there's two leaves, so I'll be able to cut both of those at the same time. And then there's that floral image. So now I'll just slide these aside and we'll pull in the Big Shot and do that cutting. All right. Okay, so let's flip this over here. Now some of you might be wondering why I have a bit of glare there. Why I have this pink layer here. This is just a piece of cardstock and I replaced my cutting mats and um, I don't know if the new ones are just not quite as thick as the older ones or what the problem was, but it wasn't, my dies weren't cutting through nicely. So I just added that shim underneath and now it cuts perfectly. Okay, so I think this is probably the trickiest part of the whole thing is trying to figure out which way this die goes. Oh, look at that, that didn't take very long at all. Okay, so I'm lining that up. I think I'm gonna use a little bit of washi tape just to make sure, just to hold that in place so it doesn't move. Okay. So I'll just position that on there and just put a little bit of tape just to hold it in place. And then I'll line up my leaves, providing it will let me do both at the same time. Sometimes there isn't quite enough space. Yeah, and the magnet's pulling. I'll run that through at two separate times. Okay, so I'm gonna carefully put the lid or the top plate on and yeah, that's gonna cause me some grief. Let's tape this one in place too. Okay. I'd much rather take the time and line it up so it's just right and put just a little bit of tape on there to hold it in place and get it right the first time then have to re-stamp everything. Okay, so I'll feed that through. And then I can take this off and this guy off. And then we'll reuse this leaf. Okay, so I'm just gonna reposition that. That washi tape that we use, we can reuse that over and over and over till it's not sticky anymore. Give that a pass through. Okay. So all of our big shotting is done. So we'll get this out of the way. And then we'll bring in all of our pieces that we need. Good morning, Mary Liz. Okay, so we've got our flower, we've got our two leaves, and then we have this beautiful little swirl image. So I'll just use my paper piercer and poke out those extra pieces that we don't need. So does anybody have any fun plans for the weekend? It's supposed to be beautiful. I think I heard that it's supposed to go up to five degrees here. That's crazy. Okay, so I've got my pieces. Now I'll bring my the base back and we're going to put this over top and so let's decorate this first. So I'm gonna use a couple dimensionals on the back of this. I can find them. I was just using them this morning. Oh, here they are. Okay, so we're gonna add maybe three because this is a larger, a larger image. I'm gonna set this. I know, I love fun folds too, Beth. Especially when they're simple. I know, Shara, isn't that awesome? I love this swirl too. I can see using it over and over. And you know what? The two inch circle punch fits perfectly in the center. So if you wanted to do a layer on top of that, you could. And it even has a little bit of stitching around the edges. I'm not sure how well you guys can see that, but oh, so pretty. 
Oh, date night tonight. What are you guys doing? That's so nice that they have a sleepover at Grandma and Grandpa's house. Okay, and now I'm going to tuck my leaves underneath. So I'll just add a little bit of Tombow. My Tombow is almost empty. Is it gonna cause me some grief here? Okay. We will do this instead. I was scrapbooking this morning. I'm preparing for uh, participating in a load challenge for the month of February, which is called, it, load stands for layout a day. So every day for the month of February, my, my goal is to finish a layout. Um, so in order to do that, along with everything else that I need to do for the month, um, I need to put some prep work in. So I've been making kits and doing some die cutting, putting cardstocks and pattern, pulling cardstocks and pattern papers and photos out and kind of putting everything together to make it a bit easier because I find sometimes that takes the longest is deciding what you're going to use. And there are some days where I don't have a ton of time to dedicate to this. Okay. So now I've got that and then I've gone ahead and I tied a bow using this Whisper White Crinkled Seam Binding. I love, I think this is my favorite ribbon. Um, I've already gone through two rolls um, and I'm almost done my third roll. I just, I love it. It's easy to tie. It looks so elegant just done the way it is, but it's so easy to color as well. You can use your regular Stampin' Write markers. You can color it with your Stampin' Blends. You can dye it with some ink refills. Like there's just so much, you can stamp on it. There's so many things that you can do with this ribbon. Um, it's just, I just find it incredibly versatile. Okay, so you need some glue buds now. So this is going to go Right, right in the corner here. So I'll just stick a mini glue dot down and then add my bow on top of it. Okay, and then this piece is going to go on top of a piece of rich Razzleberry cardstock. So this is where I need you guys' help. So I can just put it on just like this and have the rich Razzleberry or sorry, Blackberry Bliss showing on either side, which I actually quite like. I think that's quite nice. Or in this sample, I put a contrasting piece of patterned paper in behind. So I thought it might be nice with maybe a piece of green, although I don't know that I like the green on the purple. I might have to change my base to a green like that, or let me grab a scrap of old olive and we'll see. Uh, okay, this isn't quite the right size, but this will give you an idea. So do we wanna do old olive cardstock with the old olive patterned DSP so that you would see little hint of green and then more green, and then you'd have your card base that opens up or do we want to keep it simple and just put it on the blackberry what do you guys think uh, let's see I'm gonna catch up on the comments here uh, yes it's Super Bowl weekend that's right who are you cheering for Mary Liz because I don't believe correct me if I'm wrong I don't believe that your uh, team is in the um, Super Bowl. And Andrew's making Valentine's cards and you've got birthday cards to make, that's good. So crafting weekend. I know this this ribbon is so soft, it's so beautiful. And yeah, you can never, you never go wrong with a white ribbon, especially when it's easy to color. Uh, yes, and it will coordinate with whatever project you're working on. That's right, Sue, I love that. Um, Marilyn was happy to see a plain white ribbon. Yes, it makes it even better that it's so versatile. 
Okay, so, okay, it looks like Blackberry Bliss with no border. Okay, that's what it is. I think it's unanimous. Okay, so then, oh, uh, one thing I forgot to mention, and you probably noticed, when you go to put your piece down, you only wanna put adhesive on the one half. Otherwise, if you put it on the whole thing, you're gonna seal your card closed, okay? So you just wanna put adhesive on the one half. So then I'm going to seal it, like close this, and then I'll add, let's see if I can get this working. I'm going to add adhesive just on this smaller bit. It's not going to cooperate. Oh, maybe it will. No, it's not gonna cooperate. Okay, so we will go with some fast fuse. Time to replace my multi-purpose glue, I think. So I'll just put some adhesive on there and then there is going to be about an eighth of an inch border at the top and the bottom, but you wanna center it from side to side. And I just eyeball it. There we go. I do think it looks nice on the Blackberry. So there we go. And then we could add, on the other one, I added some sequins. So we could add some sequins. Let's see what this looks like on this. So I added them on here. I had one up here and a couple down here. I'm gonna try the black. Just There's no purple in here. I used clear on the last one. Or we could do gold. Or we could put them on the blackberry bit. bit. I don't think I like the gold. Or we could just leave it as is. Let's see. So in this, in this sequence, there is some solid, and then there's some that are shaped like flowers. Do I wanna pull in the black? Or do we wanna do the clear? What do you guys think, black or clear? Sue says either. I think I'm gonna go with black. I don't use black very often. The clear are really easy to use. And then that way you can use, well, I guess you the black you can use with pretty much any color. And should I put them on here? I think I do like them on there. Okay. So I guess I'll use mini glue dots because my Tombow is acting up. Um, there's no purple in here. There's red, there's orange, there's clear, there's black, and there's gold. There's no purple in this, in this configuration. Oh, if I had my uh, woven thread sequence handy, there is purple posy in that one. So you could probably pull in the purple and use that sequence. What I've done a couple times with these little sequins is once you put them on, if you put the tiniest pearl that we have inside, they look really pretty, especially the ones that are shaped like flowers because it just gives it a flower center. There we go, it's all done. Okay, so let me pull in the other one. Oh, hang on, let's uh, decorate the envelope flap. So I had this scrap left. Let's put that on here. Oh, this is, it's gonna drive me crazy. Let me get a, grab a pin and see if I can get it working. Because I really do prefer to decorate my envelope flaps with my Tombow. So I have a couple pins in my drawer that I keep handy. Sometimes all it takes is just a little, a little poke and it will start, see, that's all it needed didn't feel like it was completely empty. All right. So I'm just lining that up with the edge of the envelope flap.
Thank you, Sue. Yeah, I agree, the black does stand out better on the printed paper. Both Carol and Christine agree with me. Um, really, this card, I mean, it's, it's a simple card. The paper does all the work. I mean, even the stamped images, I mean, you didn't even have to color them in. Just using that little splotch just makes it so easy. You can get such a different look with this stamp set because there's so many different ways that you can use it. So you can do the two-step stamp way like I did today. Um, you can color it in with the blends like I did the other night on our Facebook Live. You could watercolor it, you can emboss it, and you don't even need to color it in. Like it really is a very versatile stamp set. Okay, so there we've got a nice coordinating envelope. And look at this. Let me pull in this one. So it's a completely different look. And this one I decorated with the other pattern for the envelope flap. And then we'll bring in the original card, which is here somewhere. Here it is. So this was my inspiration for those of you who joined in late. This was my inspiration for the card. This was a swap that I received from Cindy Willis. And she just used cardstock. And so she stamped the inside like that. And she used the same stamp set. So she used that this pretty little field of flowers. She stamped that across there in Blushing Bride. So pretty. I love it. So there we go. So there's a couple different ways that you can use it. You can use use it, do that little fold with patterned paper, or you can do it with cardstock and get a completely different look. And it would be fun with so many different patterned papers as well. All right, Beth says she loves the way I step up the envelopes. Yeah, you know what? I love to use my products. I love to use them up. I wanna get the most use out of them that I can and I find that using scraps, if I've got a scrap that's wide enough to put on my envelope flap and I'm using that DSP, I will do it. And I'll do it, just do it right then and there because then it'll get done. Um, because I find that, well, for me, especially being a demonstrator, once the paper is no longer available, I, I, I don't go back and use it or very rarely go back and use it because I'm busy using new stuff that comes out. So for me, it just makes me feel like I'm getting the most use out of my products when I do that. So, and plus it's pretty, I mean, when you get this in the mail and you see that pretty envelope flap, like you just, I don't know, I think it just makes you feel special. So, and if I can make my friends and family and customers feel special with that little extra touch, then I will do it. Uh, let's see, Raywin says, such a pretty card with the poppies, love the fun fold, and a great way to decorate with DSP. Thank you for sharing, you're welcome. So I hope you guys liked today's Facebook Live. Um, if you did, be sure to share it with your crafty friends. And yeah, it's a little tease of what's inside, that's right. That's right, Mary Liz, I agree. Um, and if you are not, a VIP member, be sure to check out my Stamped Treasures page, click groups, and then the VIP group will come up and request to join there. I will be back Tuesday evening for another Facebook Live in the VIP group. Um, and if there's anything that you'd like to order, of course, I'm always grateful for your orders. You can visit my website. And if you use this host code and your order is over $50, then I will spend you, I will send you a little something in the mail. All right, thanks so much for watching. Have a fabulous weekend, and I will see you on Tuesday. Bye, guys.